Christy, welcome back to my channel and welcome to day three of my 2023 Valentine card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Blonde Fawn's Ocean Shelfie, You Are Sublime, and Mermaid for You. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring it with my Copic markers. So I'm starting with the smaller of my two octopuses. And by the way, little trivia for you, it is actually octopuses, not octopi, when they are plural, because it is a Greek word and not a Latin one. So I'm starting with this little girl here and coloring her in some purple tones. I went with V12, V15, and V17. I'm laying in some shadows down the back of her head with the V17 and then on the underside of each of her tentacles. And then I'm starting to blend that out with the V15 for my mid-tone. So I'm just making sure to save some room on the top of each of her tentacles for the lightest shade so they'll each have a little bit of a highlight there and then also to the center of her face. Now if you wanted to, you could make the underside of her tentacles lighter. Uh, just depends on the look that you wanna go for. I have done both in the past, but I decided to put the shadows on the bottom for today. So I'm just using that V12 to fill in the rest of her, and I did color right over her little spots because I'm going to color those in with a darker shade later on, so it was just easier to color right over them. While I have these markers out, I also wanted to do one of these underwater plants with this combo. So I'm just choosing one over on the right hand side there and using all three of those shades. Again, just putting the shadow where it's kind of like bent back and then the highlight where it's more toward the light or um, when two of them aren't right next to each other uh, standing in the case of the one on the right. And then I did go over her spots with two layers of the V17. Then I'm moving to my larger octopus, and I wanted her to be pink. Since this is a Valentine card, I'm kind of taking a little bit of liberty here and using some fun colors. So I'm using RV10, RV11, RV13, and RV14 for her. So I'm going to use that RV14 first and lay in her shadows also on the underside of each of her tentacles. And I started putting the shadows on her head over on the left hand side, but I am going to come in and add some over on the right as well since she's facing forward. So um, her shadows would be more equal. So I just did leave, left like a little gap there um, for a little extra highlight at the top. So I filled that in with the RV13 and then began to blend out the RV14 by just carrying that color up a little bit further. Still saving some room for the lighter shades there. So just going up each of those tentacles with that RV13 and making sure that I get a nice smooth blend between those shades. And then I'm going to come in with a little extra of that RV11 at the top. I just wanted to pull it a little bit tighter in on her face there. Then I'm going to come in with the RV11, and this is going to be the highlight for all of the tentacles because they're not quite as large as like the main part of her face. So that's where I'm going to be putting my highlight. So I'm just bringing that RV11 toward the center, and I could tell that my RV11 was getting a little bit dry, so it's definitely time for a refill on that one. So when your markers get dry, they don't blend quite as well. So I did have to work a little bit harder than usual, going back and forth between the RV13 and the RV11. And then I'm going to come in and fill in the center of her face with the RV10. I'm also going to color in the little center part of the clam using the lightest three shades there. So I skipped the RV14 and then came back and did two layers of the RV14 on her spots for the larger octopus. 
Then for the jellyfish, I wanted to do something different. I typically always color them pink, but jellyfish come in all kinds of colors. I've seen them in all different shades when I've gone to the aquarium. So I decided to do more of like this blue that has a bit of an indigo tone to it. So I'm using B60, B63, and B66 for that. And then I did come in with the colorless blender to kind of blend that over the face to keep it really nice and light and almost translucent looking. And then I'm going to use these three shades for another one of these sea plants as well, just so I can have little pops of color throughout the scene that are represented in more than one place. So I'm going to fill that in and then I'm going to move on. And I'm going to start using some green shades. So I'm using YG11, YG13, and YG17 for these little um, seaweed type things. Um, I never know what to call them to differentiate. I'm not very uh, good with the names of my different plant life. But anyway, I started with the YG17 on each of the separate leaves. And then I'm blending that out with the YG13. I'm going to come in with a little bit of the YG11 on the tips. And then I'm going to come back in with the YG17 when I finish just to deepen up that darkest area because I felt like it kind of got lost there. And I just like to have that little bit of extra depth there, that little um, part where the leaf touches the stem there. So once I'm done with those, I'm going to move on to a different green combo. I'm going a little bit more of a bright yellow green, and I'm using YG00, YG01, and YG03 for these other grasses. So I just used a little YG03 on the outside edge, and then I'm blending out with the YG01, and then using a touch of that YG00. And then I'm going to bring in some grays. I'm going to use T1, T3, and T5 for these two rocks that are just going to help make up the ocean floor in my scene. Starting with the T5 and then blending out with the T3 and then using the T1 and just kind of shading in different areas because they're rocks. They don't have to be perfect. And I'll also use these shades for the clamshell, but I'm going to take away the T5 and add in the T0, so it's just a little bit lighter. And I'm going to put my shading down on the bottom edge of the bottom part, and then I kind of emphasized the little lines in the top, and then also added a bit of shading back behind the center piece with the little smiley face. <laughs> So then I'm going to move on to YR01, YR02, and YR04 for the little starfish. So just coloring that in to be a nice bright orange, which I think fits well in this color palette here. A uh, little muted, though, by adding in those lighter shades of it. And I did the inside of the conch shell with that as well. I'm going to do a second layer on the starfish just to darken it up a tiny bit. And then I'll use E50 and E51 for the rest of the conch shell. Then I'm going to use R11 and R20 to add some rosy cheeks to my octopuses and the jellyfish. And even the little center of the clam. I don't know what you would call that. <laughs> but anyway... Um, just adding the R21 first and then blending out with the R11. And then I'm going to grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen, get that going off to the side, and then I'll go over the eyes of any of my critters that have their eyes open. So basically everybody except for the large octopus. And then once I'm done, I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dyes. For the background, I'm starting with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I'm going to be blending on some Distress Oxide inks, starting with the color Stormy Sky. So I'm bringing that in at the bottom of this scene, trying to darken that up a bit, taking that up about one third of the way up the panel, and just making sure that I have a good amount of ink on there. 
and then I'm going to switch to tumbled glass. So I'm going to overlap some of the stormy sky so that I get a smooth blend between the two. It will take a little bit of work because the tumbled glass is quite a bit lighter than the stormy sky, but I'm just going to work back and forth with it and make sure that I get enough ink on there so that the two shades start to blend. And I'm also stopping before I get all the way up the panel. I wanted to leave a little bit of white space there almost to signify the light coming in from above and so it just is almost colorless up there so I'm not taking it quite all the way to the top. But I'm just going to keep working back and forth between these two ink blending tools adding a bit more of each shade until I get a nice smooth blend which is kind of what I'm going for here. So once I'm happy with it, I did add just a little bit extra stormy sky down at the bottom to darken up that edge, especially because I had been holding on to it. So sometimes a little bit of the ink lifts up on your fingers. So I just wanted that to be darkened a bit. And then I wanted to distress this a bit. So I'm going to add some clean water onto an acrylic block and then tap that off the side with a paintbrush. You could also just kind of flick it off the ends of your fingers, but you would get some larger size droplets that way. And I like the smaller size droplets, so that's why I did it off the block with the thin paintbrush. And then I let that react with that ink for maybe 30 seconds and blotted up the water with the paper towel. So it's just going to give me some faint little, almost bubbles in the background. And then I'm going to press on some of both of these inks, so the tumbled glass and the stormy sky. And then I'll add some water to those and mix them up and do some more splatters. I really like the way the lighter ink looks on the darker background, the darker part of the background, and how the darker ink looks on the lighter part. So that's why I like to use both. And I just splatter it all over until I'm happy with how it's looking and even letting that go up into the white portion as well. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to set that part aside to dry and then I've cut down another piece of bristle, actually two pieces, using the stitched hillside borders from Lawn Fawn. So I'm going to make these the sand at the bottom of the ocean. So. I'm going to start out with some antique linen distress oxide ink for that and just start to blend that onto the panels. So I'm just coming in from the top edge so it will emphasize that stitching detail. And the top one, which is a little bit taller, I'm not going to bring that ink all the way down. I will eventually bring it all the way down on the shorter one though. But then I'm going to darken that up with some gathered twigs and again I'm going to put that at the top edge to emphasize that stitching detail. So I'm going to just add that first and then I'll come back and blend everything. So right now it looks a little rough but like I said I'm going to go back to my antique linen ink blending tool and smooth everything out with another layer of that. And this time I will bring it all the way down that shorter sandy panel. And then I wanted to do the same thing, so I'm going to add some water onto my block again and splatter that all over both of these little sandy hillsides, sand dunes, um, and then let that water react with the ink and blot it up with a paper towel. And then I'm going to do some more splatter using both of those shades of ink. So I always like to um, go in with the lighter shade first, and that's just so that I don't have to clean my paintbrush in between. I can just go in with the lighter shade and then go straight into the darker shade, and that way there's less contamination. So one thing to note when you're splattering is the farther away you hold that block, the smaller your droplets are going to be, and then the closer you are, the larger they're going to be. So I try to like shift it a little bit here and there. I like generally smaller size, but I like to also have a variation. So once I'm happy with how those are looking, I'll set those aside to dry as well. And in the meantime, I'm going to take the Lawn Fawn Heart Garland Backdrop Landscape and I'm going to die cut that out of some white cardstock. 
and just pop out the inner pieces because all I want is the frame and the heart garlands. And then I'm going to color the little hearts in with some Copics. And I'm going to bring in the same shades that I used on my octopus. So I'm starting with RV14 and I'm just doing a little line on each heart on the right hand side. And you could absolutely die cut the hearts. There's a die that comes in this set that cuts out like six hearts, I think. So you can cut them out of cardstock and then just glue them over top. So you don't have to color them in. But I just wanted my hearts to match the coloring that I'd already done. So that's why I just went ahead and did it straight on the frame. And then if I messed it up, I could always die cut more hearts and cover it up, but I ended up liking how it looked. So after the RV14, I came in with the RV13 to start to blend that out. And I just have an extra piece of cardstock underneath that came from the, the lower part of the inner frame. And I'm just using that to protect my work surface so that I can just kind of color real quick and easy without being too careful. I'm just trying to make sure I don't get it on the white strings. So I'm working my way across and um, coloring in most of the heart now with these two shades, but I still have a little bit in the top left corner. So I'll use the RV10 for that. I decided to skip the RV11 since it was running dry. So I just jumped straight to the RV10 and uh, finished off the rest of those hearts just real quick and easy. So you might think it's a little unusual to have heart garlands strung at the bottom of the ocean, but I kind of like doing things that are a little bit unexpected and using dyes in ways that maybe not everybody would think of. So I think in the end it ended up really cute and uh, why not? Why not? Um, if we're going to have pink and purple octopuses, why can't they have a Valentine party at the bottom of the ocean? So I'm going to start adhering my background together now that it is dry. So I'm going to take that larger sand dune, sand hill, whatever you want to call it, and glue it to the back of the ocean portion. And then I'll take the shorter sand dune and glue that in front. So we have two layers of sand so the ocean is getting a little bit more depth there and then I'm going to take that heart garland frame and just run my Barely Art Precision craft glue around the edges and I didn't bother gluing the hearts down um, because it's all just in one kind of flat layer uh, I think they'll stick pretty well down and plus I didn't know if I wanted to kind of tuck some things up behind them later on so I just left those loose and they'll stay in place because the frame is glued down. So I'm just making sure that's on there nice and straight and then holding that down for a few seconds until the glue dries and then I'm going to pop that in my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment and I'm doing that with Versafine Onyx Black Ink and I'm stamping out You Octopi My Thoughts down at the bottom. So I'm going to stamp that out a couple of times to make sure it's nice and bold, especially on those darker splatters of the sand. And then I'll pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Ballet Slippers cardstock from Lawn Fawn and Plastic Flamingo ink. And I'm just doing another jellyfish and some little bubbles and the word hugs. I wanted to keep it simple because I don't know, you know, who I want to send this card to yet. So, um, just keeping that sentiment symbol, and then it also gives me more room to write a message on the inside. So I'm gonna glue the focal panel to the card front and it's gonna cover it up completely. So just making sure that all the corners are lined up again so it's all nice and straight and smoothing everything down into place. And then I'll bring in my images and I'm going to kind of arrange a few of these uh, first because I want to make sure that I have room for everything. So I'm just figuring out my layout here and um, trying to decide, you know, where I want the different stones and the sea plants and all of that. So 
Um, I like to lay things out, especially because the glue that I use, the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, I absolutely love it, but it dries super fast. So you don't have a lot of time to maneuver, and also it's very hard to pull things back up again. So just laying things out ahead of time and kind of figuring out where things are going to go before I commit to it, it's just been a good habit to establish and uh, every time I don't do this I end up regretting it so um, just figuring out like I said where I want certain things and uh, making sure that my scene is nice and full so like I said I'm going to tuck this little grass back under that little heart string so it's a good thing I didn't glue those down and it was you know it's still easy to do to just lift it up with my fingernail and tuck it under so I'm also making sure that I spread those colors around like I mentioned. So the little purple plant, I made sure to put that as far away from the purple octopus as possible. And I'll do the same with the blue plant, trying to keep it kind of away from the blue jellyfish. So, you know, that it just has the little pops here and there. So I'm changing my mind about that smaller stone and putting it back in the distance there to make a little cluster with these little plants kind of growing up behind it. And then I'm going to um, just kind of fiddle around with these extra little pieces and uh, see where they look best. So I ended up putting that purple plant up also on that second uh, sand dune, tucking that back behind there. And then I'll put the grasses down lower where the purple plant had been before and I'm going to anchor that with a little conch shell and then I'm going to use that blue plant and um, I'm going to add that so it's, it is kind of going to end up near that jellyfish but I did color it darker than the jellyfish too so they don't look too much the same. So normally when I'm adhering images, I like to start with my largest ones first and then work smaller from there. But on this card, I did it opposite because a lot of things were getting tucked behind other things. So I was basically working back to front instead. So anything that was going to be, you know, tucked behind the octopus's tentacles or anything like that, uh, that was, those were the things that I wanted to adhere first, which also really helps to have your you know images kind of laid out and those things decided before you start gluing things down so i have the little clam shell that is going to be the most front piece there in front of the two octopus's tentacles and then i have the little jellyfish that i'm going to put kind of swimming in between the heart garlands up above and I thought I was done, but I realized that I forgot to add in the little starfish. So I'm just kind of looking for a place to add that. And I kind of decided that I wanted to put it in that little cluster in the back there, just to kind of uh, give that a little bit of extra depth there. So then I wanted to just fill up a little bit more of the empty space between the heart garlands with some of these bubbles. I'm taking them from the various sets that I used for the images and I'm stamping them down in that Stormy Sky Distress Oxide ink so that it matches. So I'm just taking some that are in clusters and then some that are single and just stamping them down wherever I think that they should go and just filling up that space, like I said. And then I wanted to add in a little bit of stickles, like always, gotta have some glitter. So I'm gonna grab my favorite Stardust stickles and just kind of add it here and there to a few of these details to give them a little bit of shine and sparkle. So I added it to the starfish and the conch shell, and I'm gonna put it on the spots on both of my octopuses so um, just making sure that it only goes in the spots and uh, if I had any that kind of went outside the lines I just used my finger to wipe it away while it was still wet I also outlined some of the plants just to give them a little extra shine and I 
thought about doing it on the hearts, on the heart garland, but I was afraid it would overwhelm the card, so I decided not to. So that is going to finish this one up. I'll give you a closer look at all of that detail and another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think this is definitely a Valentine party that I personally would love to attend. I love octopuses. I think they're just such cool creatures. If you did enjoy it, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a video. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. All of the products that I use will be linked down below, and if you'd like to keep watching, here's day three from the previous two years of Valentine card series. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.